from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and Ecosystem Partners. Hi, and welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Joop Piskag, I'm covering KubeCon CloudNativeCon, here remotely from, uh, from the Netherlands. And I'm joined by Commvault's Matthew Pearson. He's a senior product manager, as well as David No, uh, vice president of Metallic Products and Engineering, to you know, talk about the cloud native space and data protection in the cloud native space. So both, welcome to the show. Um, and I want to start off with kind of the, the why question, right? Why are we here, obviously, but also why are we talking about data protection? Um, I thought we had that figured out. So David, can you shed some light on, on how you know, data protection is totally different in the cloud native container space? Sure, absolutely, thank you. Um, I, I think the thing to keep in mind is that um, you know, containers are, are an evolution of, uh, uh, and a revolution actually in, in the virtualization space and the cloud space. Um, what we're seeing is that customers are turning more and more to uh, SaaS based applications and infrastructure uh, in order to modernize their, uh, their data centers and, and their data state and their compute environments. And when they do that, they're looking for um, solutions that match how they deploy uh, their applications. And SaaS for us um, is an important, uh, important uh, area of that space. So Metallic is Commvault's portfolio of uh, SaaS delivered and SaaS native data protection capabilities and offerings um, to allow customers to take the advantage of the best of SaaS um, that is easy to try, easy to buy, easy to deploy, no infrastructure required, uh, and combine that with the technology and experience of Commvault. Um, it will build over the last 20 years to deliver a, an enterprise grade uh, data protection solution delivered as SaaS. And so, um, you know, with Kubernetes and uh, deploying in the cloud and modernizing applications, I think, um, that's very appealing to customers to also be able to modernize their, their data protection. Yeah, so I, I get the SaaS part. I mean, SaaS is, is an important way of delivering services. It is, especially in the mid-market, you know, something customers prefer. They want to have that simplicity, that easy onboarding, uh, as well as the, uh, the OPEX of, you know, paying a subscription fee instead of uh, uh, longer term fees. So, you know, the delivery model makes sense that fits into, you know, the, the, the paradigm of making it simple, getting started easily. I get that. But, you know, Metallic isn't, you know, a traditional uh, backup solution in, in that sense, right? It's not backing up uh, necessarily just physical machines or just virtual machines. It has relevance in the cloud native space. And the way I understand it, and please, you know, if you can shed some light on that, uh, Matt, is... Um, how is it different? What does it do that you know kind of makes it stand apart? Yeah, look, what we've found is the application developer is in control now. So, so it's not like a traditional backup. That's that's what's changed. At this point, the application developer is free to create the infrastructure that he or she needs, and. And that, that freedom has, has meant that a bunch of stateful applications, the apps that we didn't think were going to live in Kubernetes, have made their way to Kubernetes and they're making their way fast. So why is, why is Metallic different? Because it's taking its lead from the developer. So it's using things like namespaces and label selectors to basically take uh, input from the developer on what information is important and needs to be protected and then protecting it. So it's your easy button to keep the, that Kubernetes development uh, protected while you keep pace with the, the innovation within the organization. So you raise a valid point. Um, you know, Cloud Native has many advantages. It also has, you know, an extra challenge to, um, to account for, which is fragmentation, right? Uh, in, in, you know, the olden days, uh, let's call it that. We had, you know, a virtual machine, maybe uh, a couple, maybe a couple dozen that made up an application. And it was fairly easy to pinpoint, you know, the kind of the sort of conference of an application. This is my application. Yeah. Uh, but now with cloud native, you know, applications data um, can basically live anywhere, it, you know, in a single cloud vendor, um, in um, many different cloud uh, uh, accounts, 
uh, across different services, across even across the you know the public clouds themselves, like in a true multi-cloud scenario. And figuring out what is part of an application in that enormous fragmentation is you know a, a challenge I think is understated and underestimated in a lot of operational uh, environments with customers with their applications in in production. Um, and that's where I think you know a, a product needs to figure out how to uh, make sure an application is still backed up, is still protected in the way that is necessary for that given application. So I, I wonder how that works with Metallic. How do you kind of figure out what part of of you know that enormous fragmentation is part of a single application? Yeah. So. Metallic uh, effectively integrates and speaks natively with the Kube API server. So it's it's taking its lead from the, you know, the system of, of truth, which is the orchestrator, which is Kubernetes itself. So for example, if you say everything in your production namespace needs protection, every every night or every four hours, whatever that may be, it steps out and asks Kubernetes what applications exist there. It then maps all of the associated API resources associated with that application, including the persistent volumes and persistent volume claims, mounts those up and grabs the data from them as well. And that allows us to then replay or reschedule that application either back to that original cluster or to another one for application mobility or DR. So how do you make sure um, you... It kind of, you know, what's the, what's the central point where everything comes together for that given application? Is that something the developer uh, uh, does as part of their release process or as part of their CI/CD? How do you figure out what what components are are part of an, an application? <laughs> That's that is definitely a big challenge in the industry today. So, um, so today. Uh, we, we use label selectors predominantly. We find developers have been uh, educating us on what works for them. And they've said, you know, our CI CD system is going to label everything associated with this app, both namespaced and non namespaced resources. So just, you know, here, take, take my label, grab everything under that, and you will be good. Uh, the reality is that doesn't work for every business. Some businesses, drop things into a specific namespace. Um, and then you've got the added challenge that all of your data doesn't actually just live in Kubernetes. What about your image registries? What about etcd? What about your source code control and CICD systems? So we're finding that even um, VMs as well uh, are playing a part in this ecosystem right now until applications can, can fully migrate. Yeah, and, and let's zoom out on that a little bit. I mean, I mean, I think it's great that developers now kind of have flipped the paradigm where backup and data protection used to be something, you know, squarely in the ops domain. It's now made its way into the dev domain where it's become fairly easy to tag resources as, you know, application X, application Y. And then it, it automatically gets pulled into the backup based on policies. I mean, that's great, but let's let's zoom out a little bit and figure out what the, you know, why is this happening? Why are developers even being put in a uh, position of backing up uh, their applications? So David, do you want to shed some light on that for me? Sure, I, I think data protection is is always going to be uh, a requirement. You'll have persistent data, right? There are other elements of applications that, that will always need to be protected. And data protection is often something that um, is an afterthought, but it's something that needs to be considered from the beginning um, you know, and, and Metallic in being able to support deployments, not just in the cloud, but on premises as well. Um, we support, um, you know, any number of, of uh, certified distributions of Kubernetes, um, gives you the flexibility to make sure that those apps and that data is protected, uh, no matter where it lives, uh, being able to do that from a, a single pane of glass, being able to manage, um, your Kubernetes deployments in, in different environments is, is very important there. So let's dive into that a little bit. Uh, I hear you say, you know, certified Kubernetes uh, distributions. So what's what's kind of the common denominator we need to use Metallic in an environment? Because I hear on-prem, I hear public cloud. Um, so it, it seems to me like this is a, a pretty broad product in, in terms of what it supports and in its scope. Um, 
But what is it, you know, what, what's, what's the lowest common denominator, for instance, in the on-prem environment? Sure. So um, we support all CNCF uh, certified distributions of Kubernetes today. Uh, and in the cloud, we support um, Azure with AKS and, uh, and AWS with, uh, with uh, EKS. So you can really use the, the one metallic environment, the one interface to be able to uh, manage all of those environments. And so what about the, the storage underneath? Is that all uh, through uh, CSI? Yes. So we support CSI on the back end uh, of the Kubernetes uh, of the Kubernetes applications, um, and we can uh, then protect all the data uh, stored there. And, and so how does this, uh, I mean, you, you acquired Hedvig uh, about a year ago, I want to say, but you're on the exact date. Right. You acquired Hedvig uh, a little while ago. So how does that, how does that come into play in, in, in the metallic offering? Sure, the, the, the Hedwig storage, distributed storage platform um, is a fantastic uh, platform on which to uh, provision and scale uh, Kubernetes applications and clusters. And that um, having full integration with Kubernetes on the storage side, uh, we support that uh, natively and uh, really builds on the value that Kamal can bring as a whole with all of its offerings uh, as a platform to uh, to Kubernetes. All right. So um, you know, zooming out just just a little more, I, I want to get a feel for you know, kind of the portfolio of Commvault what, uh, as we're ushering in, into this cloud native era, as we're helping customers make that move and make that transition. What's the positioning of of Metallic in you know basically in, in the transformation customers are going through from on prem to kind of lift and shift cloud? into the cloud native space? Yeah, so with today's uh, with today's announcements, our hybrid cloud support uh, and our hybrid cloud initiatives uh, really help customers manage data wherever it lives, as I, I mentioned earlier. Um, customers can start with workloads on-prem uh, and start protecting workloads that they either have uh, migrated or starting to build in the cloud uh, natively and really cover uh, the gamut of, of infrastructure and hypervisors and file systems and storage locations uh, amongst all of these locations. So from our perspective, we think that uh, hybrid is going to, is here to stay, right? There are very few customers who are either going to be all on premises or all in the cloud. Um, most customers have some requirement that keeps them in a hybrid configuration. And we see that uh, being prevalent for quite some time. So supporting customers um, in their transformation, right? Uh, where they are moving applications from on-premises to the cloud, either refactoring or lift and shift or what have you. Um, it's very important to them. Uh, it's very important for us to be able to support that motion. Um, and you know, we look forward to uh, helping them along the way. Awesome, so one last question for, uh, for Matt. I mean, Metallic is a set of service, right? That means you run it, you operate it, you build it. So I wonder, is Metallic itself cloud native? How does it scale? What, what are kind of the, the big components that, that Metallic is made up of? So Metallic itself is absolutely cloud native. Uh, it, is, uh, it is sitting uh, inside Azure today. Um, I, I, I won't go into all of the details. Uh, in fact, uh, David could, could probably provide far more, far more detail there. But, but I think Metallic is cloud native with respect to the fact that it's speaking natively to your applications, your cloud instances, your VMs, and then it's giving you the agility and, and the, the ability to move them where you need them to be. And that, that's assisting people in that migration. So in the past, we helped people get from, you know, P to V. Uh, now, now that they're virtualized, um, applications like Metallic can, can protect you wherever you are and get you to wherever you need to be, especially into, you know, your next cloud of choice. And there's there's always a, another cloud. What I'm interested to see and, and what I'm hoping to see out of uh, out of uh, KubeCon is how how are we doing with, with KubeVert and, and 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 Kubernetes becoming the orchestrator of the data center? And how are we doing with some of these other projects like application CIDs and hierarchical namespaces that are truly going to build a multi-tenanted software-defined, you know, distributed 
application ecosystem that Metallic can speak natively to via Kubernetes. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you both for uh, for being with me uh, today. I, uh, I certainly learned a ton about Metallic. I uh, learned a lot about the, the challenges in, in Cloud Native. That'll certainly be uh, a you know a, an area of development in the next couple of, of years, as you know the CNCF uh, will uh, will continue to support projects in this space and vendors to uh, to work with us in that space as well. So that's it for now. Um, I'm Yupi Skar, I'm covering for uh, KubeCon here uh, remotely from the Netherlands. I will see you next time. Thanks.